The Two Worlds by Mortimer Collins. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Canada. The Two Worlds. Two worlds there are. To one our eyes we strain, whose magic joys we shall not see again. Bright haze of morning veils its glimmering shore. Ah, truly breathed we there intoxicating air, glad were our hearts in that sweet realm of nevermore. The lover there drank her delicious breath, whose love has yielded since to change or death. The mother kissed her child, whose days are o'er. Alas, too soon have fled the irreclaimable dead. We see them, visions strange, amid the nevermore. The merrysome maiden used to sing, The brown, brown hair that once was wont to cling To temples long clay-cold. To the very core they strike our weary hearts, As some vexed memory starts from that long-faded land, the realm of nevermore. It is perpetually summer there, but here sadly may we remember rivers clear and harebells quivering on the meadow floor. For brighter bells and bluer, for tenderer hearts and truer people that happy land, the realm of nevermore. Upon the frontier of this shadowy land we pilgrims of eternal sorrow stand. What realm lies forward, with its happier store of forests green and deep, of valleys hushed in sleep, and lakes most peaceful? Tis the land of evermore. Very far off its marble cities seem, very far off, beyond our sensual dream, its woods unruffled by the wild wind's roar. Yet does the turbulent surge howl on its very verge. One moment, and we breathe within the evermore. They whom we loved and lost so long ago dwell in those cities, far from mortal woe, haunt those fresh woodlands whence sweet carolings soar. Eternal peace have they, God wipes their tears away. They drink that river of life which flows from evermore. Thither we hasten through these regions dim, But, lo, the wide wings of the seraphim shine in the sunset. On that joyous shore our lightened hearts shall know the life of long ago. The sorrow-burdened past shall fade for evermore. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Answer by Anonymous From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Answer Who would not go, with buoyant steps, To gain that blessed portal, Which opens to the land we long to know, Where shall be satisfied the souls immortal, Where we shall drop the wearying and the woe in resting so? ah who would fear since sometimes through the distant pearly portal unclosing to some happy soul anear we catch a gleam of glorious light immortal and strains of heavenly music faintly hear breathing good cheer who would endure to walk in doubt and darkness with misgiving when he whose tender promises are sure the crucified the lord the ever-living keeps us those mansions ever more secure by waters pure o wondrous land fairer than all our spirits fairest dreaming i hath not seen no heart can understand the things prepared the cloudless radiance dreaming how longingly we wait our lord's command his opening hand o dear ones there whose voices hushed have left our pathway lonely we come ere long your blessed home to share 
we take the guiding hand we trust it only seeing by faith beyond this clouded air that land so fair end of poem this recording is in the public domain forever with the lord by james montgomery from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part two read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Canada Forever with the Lord Forever with the Lord, amen, so let it be. Life from the dead is in that word, and immortality. Here in the body pent, absent from him I roam, yet nightly pitch my moving tent a day's march nearer home. My father's house on high, home of my soul how near at times to faith's foreseeing eye thy golden gates appear ah then my spirit faints to reach the land i love the bright inheritance of saints jerusalem above yet clouds will intervene and all my prospect flies like noah's dove i flit between rough seas and stormy skies anon the clouds depart the winds and waters cease while sweetly o'er my gladdened heart expands the bow of peace beneath its glowing arch along the hallowed ground i see cherubic armies march a camp of fire around i hear at morn and even at noon and midnight hour the choral harmonies of heaven earth's babble tongues o'erpower then when i feel that he remembered or forgot the lord is never far from me though i perceive him not in darkness as in light hidden alike from view i sleep i wake as in his sight who looks all nature through all that i am have been all that i yet may be he sees at once as he hath seen and shall forever see forever with the lord father if tis thy will the promise of that faithful word unto thy child fulfill so when my latest breath shall rend the veil in twain by death i shall escape from death and life eternal gain End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Heaven Approach to Sufi Saint by Jalal ad-Din Rumi Translated from the Persian by William R. Alger From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter as the narrator Craig Franklin as God And Lian Yao as the Sufi saint. To heaven approached a Sufi saint. To heaven approached a Sufi saint from groping in the darkness late, and tapping timidly and faint, besought admission at God's gate. Said God, Who seeks to enter here? Tis I, dear friend, the saint replied, and trembling much with hope and fear, If it be thou, without abide sadly to earth the poor saint turned to bear the scourging of life's rods but i his heart within him yearned to mix and lose its love and gods he roamed alone through weary years by cruel men still scorned and mocked until from faith's pure fires and tears again he rose and modest knocked asked god who now is at the door it is thyself beloved lord answered the saint in doubt no more but clasped and wrapped in his reward end of poem this recording is in the public domain matter and man immortal from night thoughts night six 
by Dr. Edward Young. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. Matter and Man Immortal As in a wheel, all sinks to reascend. Emblems of man who passes not expires. With this minute distinction, emblems just, nature revolves. But man advances, both eternal, that a circle, this a line. That gravitates, this soars. The aspiring soul, ardent and tremulous, like flame, ascends. Zeal and humility her wings to heaven. The world of matter, with its various forms, all dies into new life, life born from death. Rolls the vast mass and shall for ever roll. No single atom, once in being lost, with change of counsel charges the most high. What hence infers Lorenzo? Can it be? Matter immortal? And shall spirit die? Above the nobler shall less noble rise? Shall man alone, for whom all else revives, no resurrection know? Shall man alone, imperial man, be sown in barren ground, less privileged than grain on which he feeds? Look nature through. Tis neat gradation all, by what minute degree her scale ascends. Each middle mature joined at each extreme, to that above is joined, to that beneath, parts, into parts reciprocally shot, a bore divorce. What love of union reigns! Here, dormant matter waits a call to life, half life half death joined there here life and sense there sense from reason steals a glimmering ray reason shines out in man but how preserved the chain unbroken upward to the realms of incorporeal life those realms of bliss where death hath no dominion grant to make half mortal half immortal earthy part and part ethereal grant the soul of man eternal or in man the series ends wide yawns the gap connection is no more checked reason halts her next step wants support striving to climb she tumbles from her scheme end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Life from Festus, Seen a Country Town by Philip James Bailey for the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Canada as the narrator, Thomas Peter as Festus, and Sonia as Lucifer life from festus seen a country town oh there is a life to come or all's a dream and all may be a dream thou seest in thine men deeds clear moving full of speech and order then why may not all this world be but a dream of gods fear not some morning god may waken i would it were this life's a mystery the value of a thought cannot be told but it is clearly worth a thousand lives like many men's and yet men love to live as if mere life were worth their living for what but perdition will it be to most lives more than breath and the quick round of blood it is a great spirit and a busy heart 
the coward and the small in soul scarce do live one generous feeling one great thought one deed of good ere night would make life longer seem than if each year might number a thousand days spent as is this by nations of mankind we live in deeds not years in thoughts not breaths in feelings not in figures on a dial we should count time by heart-throbs he most lives who thinks most feels the noblest acts the best life's but a means unto an end that end beginning mean and end to all things god end of poem this recording is in the public domain heaven by jeremy taylor from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part two read for librivox dot org by jason in canada heaven o beauteous god uncircumscribed treasure of an eternal pleasure thy throne is seated far above the highest star where thou preparest a glorious place within the brightness of thy face for every spirit to inherit that builds his hope upon thy merit and loves thee with a holy charity what ravished heart seraphic tongue or eyes clear as the morning rise can speak or think or see that bright eternity where the great king's transparent throne is of an entire jasper stone there the eye of the chrysolite and a sky of diamonds rubies chrysoprase and above all thy holy face makes an eternal charity when thou thy jewels up dost bind that day remember us we pray that's where the barrel lies and the crystal above the skies there thou mayest appoint us place within the brightness of thy face and our soul in the scroll of life and blissfulness and roll that we may praise thee to eternity hallelujah end of poem this recording is in the public domain the spirit land by jones very from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part two Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Spirit Land Father, thy wonders do not singly stand, Nor far removed where feet have seldom strayed. Around us ever lies the enchanted land, In marvels which to thine own sons displayed. In finding thee are all things round us found, In losing thee are all things lost beside ears have we but in vain strange voices sound and to our eyes the vision is denied we wander in the country far remote mid tombs and ruined piles in death to dwell or on the records of past greatness dote and for a buried soul the living sell while on our path bewildered falls the night that never returns us to the fields of light End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Heaven by Nancy Amelia Woodbury Priest From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4 The Higher Life, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Heaven Beyond these chilling winds and gloomy skies Beyond death's cloudy portal there is a land where beauty never dies, where love becomes immortal. A land whose life is never dimmed by shade, whose fields are ever vernal, where nothing beautiful can ever fade, but blooms for aye eternal. We may know how sweet its balmy air, how bright and fair its flowers. We may not hear the songs that echo there, through those enchanted bowers 
the city's shining towers we may not see with our dim earthly vision for death the silent warder keeps the key that opes the gates elysian but sometimes when adown the western sky a fiery sunset lingers its golden gates swing inward noiselessly unlocked by unseen fingers and while they stand a moment half ajar gleams from the inner glory stream brightly through the azure vault afar and half reveal the story o land unknown o land of love divine father all-wise eternal o guide these wandering wayworn feet of mine into those pastures vernal end of poem this recording is in the public domain Tell Me Ye Winged Wings by Philip James Bailey from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Canada as the narrator. Sonia as the wind. Thomas Peter as the waves. Craig Franklin as the moon. And Lian Yao as faith, hope, and love tell me ye winged wings tell me ye winged wings that round my pathway roar do ye not know some spot where mortals weep no more some lone and pleasant dell some valley in the west where free from toil and pain the weary soul may rest the loud wind dwindled to a whisper low and sighed for pity as it answered no tell me thou mighty deep whose billows round me play knowst thou some favoured spot some island far away where weary man may find the bliss for which he sighs where sorrow never lives and friendship never dies the loud waves rolling in perpetual flow stopped for a while and sighed to answer no and thou serenest moon that with such lovely face dost look upon the earth asleep in night's embrace tell me in all thy round hast thou not seen some spot where miserable man may find a happier lot behind a cloud the moon withdrew in woe and a voice sweet but sad responded no tell me my secret soul o oh, tell me hope and faith is there no resting place from sorrow sin and death is there no happy spot where mortals may be blessed where grief may find a balm and weariness a rest faith hope and love best boons to mortals given waved their bright wings and whispered yes in heaven end of poem this recording is in the public domain heaven by isaac watts from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part two Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Heaven. There is a land of pure delight where saints immortal reign. Infinite day excludes the night and pleasures banish pain. There everlasting spring abides and never withering flowers. Death like a narrow sea divides this heavenly land from ours sweet fields beyond the swelling flood stand dressed in living green so to the jews old canaan stood while jordan rolled between but timorous mortals start and shrink to cross this narrow sea and linger shivering on the brink and fear to launch away oh could we make our doubts remove those gloomy doubts that rise and see the canaan that we love 
with unbeclouded eyes could we but climb where moses stood and view the landscape over not jordan's stream nor death's cold flood should fright us from the shore end of poem this recording is in the public domain peace by henry vaughan from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part two read for librivox dot org by thomas peter peace my soul there is a country afar beyond the stars where stands a winged sentry all skilful in the wars there above noise and danger sweet peace sits crowned with smiles and one born in a manger commands the beauteous files he is thy gracious friend and o oh my soul awake did in pure love descend to die here for thy sake if thou canst get but thither there grows the flower of peace the rose that cannot wither thy fortress and thy ease leave then thy foolish ranges for none can thee secure but one who never changes thy god thy life thy cure end of poem this recording is in the public domain star mist from stars by john keeble from the world's best poetry volume four the high life part two read for librivox dot org by lian yao star mist more and more stars behold you hazy arch spanning the vault on high by planets traversed in majestic march seeming to earth's dull eye a breath of gleaming air but take thou wing of faith and upward spring into a thousand stars the misty light will part each star a world with its own day and night not otherwise of yonder saintly host upon the glorious shore deem thou he marks them all not one is lost by name he counts them o'er full many a soul to man's dim praise unknown may on its glory throne as brightly shine and prove as strong in prayer as theirs whose separate beams shoot keenest through this air. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ministry of Angels From The Fairy Queen Book Two, Canto Eight By Edmund Spencer From The World's Best Poetry, Volume Four The Higher Life, Part Two Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter The Ministry of Angels From The Fairy Queen, Book Two, Canto Eight And is there care in heaven? And is there love in heavenly spirits to these creatures base That may compassion of their evils move? There is, else much more wretched were the case Of men than beasts. But, O oh, the exceeding grace of highest God, that loves his creatures so, And all his works with mercy doth embrace, That blessed angels he sends to and fro, To serve to wicked man, To serve his wicked foe. How oft do they their silver bowers leave, To come to succour us that succour want! How oft do they with golden pinions cleave The flitting skies like flying perseverant, against foul fiends to aid us militant they for us fight they watch and duly ward and their bright squadrons round about us plant and all for love and nothing for reward oh why should heavenly god to men have such regard end of poem this recording is in the public domain St. Agnes by Alfred Lord Tennyson From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, 
the higher life part two read for LibriVox.org by sonia saint agnes deep on the convent roof the snows are sparkling to the moon my breath to heaven like vapour goes may my soul follow soon the shadows of the convent towers slant down the snowy sward still creeping with the creeping hours that lead me to my lord make thou my spirit pure and clear as are the frosty skies or this first snowdrop of the year that in my bosom lies as these white robes are soiled and dark to yonder shining ground as this pale taper's earthly spark to yonder argent round so shows my soul before the lamb my spirit before thee so in mine earthly house i am to that i hope to be break up the heavens o lord and far through all yon starlight keen draw me thy bride a glittering star in raiment white and clean he lifts me to the golden doors the flashes come and go all heaven bursts her starry floors and strows her lights below and deepens on and up the gates roll back and far within for me the heavenly bridegroom waits to make me pure of sin the sabbath of eternity one sabbath deep and wide a light upon the shining sea the bridegroom with his bride end of poem this recording is in the public domain praise of the celestial country by bernard de morlet translated from the latin by john mason neal from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part two read for librivox org by thomas peter as the narrator and sonia as the christian people praise of the celestial country the poem de contemptu mundi was written by bernard de morlet monk of cluny the translation following is of a portion of the poem distinguished by the subtitle laus patriae coelestis the world is very evil the times are waxing late be sober and keep vigil the judge is at the gate the judge that comes in mercy the judge that comes with might to terminate the evil to diadem the right when the just and gentle monarch shall summon from the tomb let man the guilty tremble for man the god shall doom arise arise good christian let right to wrong succeed let penitential sorrow to heavenly gladness lead to the light that hath no evening that knows nor moon nor sun the light so new and golden the light that is but one and when the soul begotten shall render up once more the kingdom to the father whose own it was before then glory yet unheard of shall shed abroad its ray resolving all enigmas an endless sabbath day for thee o oh dear dear country mine eyes their vigils keep for very love beholding thy happy name they weep the mention of thy glory is unction to the breast and medicine in sickness and love and life and rest o one o only mansion o paradise of joy where tears are ever banished and smiles have no alloy beside thy living waters all plants are great and small the cedar of the forest the hyssop of the wall with jaspers glow thy bulwarks thy streets with emeralds blaze the sarges and the topaz unite in thee their rays thine ageless walls are bonded with amethyst unpriced thy saints build up its fabric and the cornerstone is christ the cross is all thy splendor the crucified thy praise his laud and benediction thy ransomed people raise jesus the gem of beauty 
true god and man they sing the never failing garden the ever golden ring the door the pledge the husband the guardian of his court the day star of salvation the porter and the port thou hast no shore fair ocean thou hast no time bright day dear fountain of refreshment to pilgrims far away upon the rock of ages they raise thy holy tower thine is the victor's laurel and thine the golden dower thou feel'st in mystic rapture o bride that know'st no guile the prince's sweetest kisses the prince's loveliest smile unfading lilies bracelets of living pearl thine own the lamb is ever near thee the bridegroom thine alone the crown is he to garden the buckler to protect and he himself the mansion and he the architect the only art thou needest thanksgiving for thy lot the only joy thou seekest the life where death is not and all thine endless leisure in sweetest accents sings the ill that was thy merit the wealth that is thy king's jerusalem the golden with milk and honey blessed beneath thy contemplation sing heart and voice oppressed i know not oh i know not what social joys are there what radiancy of glory what light beyond compare and when i fain would sing them my spirit fails and faints and vainly would it image the assembly of the saints they stand those halls of zion conjubilant with song and bright with many an angel and all the martyr throng the prince is ever in them the daylight is serene the pastures of the blessed are decked in glorious sheen there is the throne of david and there from care released the song of them that triumph the shout of them that feast and they who with their leader have conquered in the fight for ever and for ever are clad in robes of white o holy placid harp notes of that eternal hymn o sacred sweet reflection and peace of seraphim o thirst for ever ardent yet ever more content o true peculiar vision of god contipotent ye know the many mansions for many a glorious name and diverse retributions the diverse merits claim for midst the constellations that deck our earthly sky this star than that is brighter and so it is on high jerusalem the glorious the glory of the elect o dear and future vision that eager hearts expect even now by faith i see thee even here thy walls discern to thee my thoughts are kindled and strive and pant and yearn jerusalem the only that looks from heaven below in thee is all my glory in me is all my woe and though my body may not my spirit seeks thee fain till flesh and earth return me to earth and flesh again o none can tell thy bulwarks how gloriously they rise o none can tell thy capitals of beautiful device thy loveliness oppresses all human thought and heart and none o peace o zion can sing thee as thou art new mansion of new people whom god's own love and light promote increase make holy identify unite thou city of the angels thou city of the lord whose everlasting music is the glorious decachord and there the band of prophets united praise ascribes and there the twelvefold chorus of israel's ransomed tribes the lily beds of virgins the roses martyr glow the cohort of the fathers who kept the faith below 
and there the soul begotten is lord in regal state he judah's mystic lion he lamb immaculate o fields that know no sorrow o state that fears no strife o princely bowers o land of flowers o realm and home of life jerusalem exulting on that securest shore i hope thee wish thee sing thee and love thee evermore i ask not for my merit i seek not to deny my merit is destruction a child of wrath am i but yet with faith i venture and hope upon my way for those perennial guerdons i labor night and day the best and dearest father who made me and who saved bore with me in defilement and from defilement laved when in his strength i struggle for very joy i leap when in my sin i totter i weep or try to weep then grace sweet grace celestial shall all its love display and david's royal fountain purge every sin away o mine my golden zion o lovelier far than gold with laurel girt battalions and safe victorious fold o sweet and blessed country shall i ever see thy face o sweet and blessed country shall i ever win thy grace i have the hope within me to comfort and to bless shall i ever win the prize itself oh tell me tell me yes exult o dust and ashes the lord shall be thy part his only his forever thou shalt be and thou art exult o dust and ashes the lord shall be thy part his only his forever thou shalt be and thou art end of poem this recording is in the public domain the new jerusalem or the soul's breathing after the heavenly country by anonymous from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part two read for librivox dot org by sonia as the narrator and thomas peter as christ the lord the new jerusalem or the soul's breathing after the heavenly country since christ's fair truth needs no man's art take this rude song in better part o mother dear jerusalem when shall i come to thee when shall my sorrows have an end thy joys when shall i see o happy harbour of god's saints o sweet and pleasant soil in thee no sorrows can be found no grief no care no toil in thee no sickness is at all no hurt nor any sore there is no death nor ugly night but life for evermore no dimming cloud overshadows thee no cloud nor darksome night but every soul shines as the sun for god himself gives light there lust and lucre cannot dwell there envy bears no sway there is no hunger thirst nor heat but pleasures every way jerusalem jerusalem would god i were in thee o oh, that my sorrows had an end thy joys that i might see no pains no pangs no grieving griefs no woeful night is there no sigh no sob no cry is heard no well away no fear jerusalem the city is of god our king alone the lamb of god the light thereof sits there upon his throne o god that i jerusalem with speed may go behold for why the pleasures there abound which here cannot be told thy turrets and thy pinnacles with carbuncles do shine with jasper pearl and chrysolite surpassing pure and fine thy houses are of ivory 
thy windows crystal clear thy streets are laid with beaten gold their angels do appear thy walls are made of precious stone thy bulwarks diamond square thy gates are made of orient pearl o god if i were there within thy gates no thing can come that is not passing clean no spider's web no dirt nor dust no filth may there be seen jehovah lord now come away and end my griefs and plaints take me to thy jerusalem and place me with thy saints who there are crowned with glory great and see god face to face they triumph still and a rejoice most happy is their case but we that are in banishment continually do moan we sigh we mourn we sob we weep perpetually we groan our sweetness mixed is with gall our pleasures are but pain our joys not worth the looking on our sorrows a remain but there they live in such delight such pleasure and such play that unto them a thousand years seems but as yesterday o oh, my sweet home jerusalem thy joys when shall i see the king sitting upon his throne and thy felicity thy vineyards and thy orchards so wonderfully rare are furnished with all kinds of fruit most beautifully fair thy gardens and thy goodly walks continually are green there grow such sweet and pleasant flowers as nowhere else are seen there cinnamon and sugar grow there nard and balm abound no tongue can tell no heart can think the pleasures there are found there nectar and ambrosia spring there music's ever sweet there many a fair and dainty thing are trod down under feet quite through the street with pleasant sound the flood of life doth flow upon the banks on every side the trees of life do grow these trees each month yield ripened fruit for evermore they spring and all the nations of the world to thee their honours bring jerusalem god's dwelling-place full sore i long to see o oh, that my sorrows had an end that i might dwell in thee there david stands with harp in hand as master of the choir a thousand times that man were blessed that might his music hear there mary sings magnificate with tunes surpassing sweet and all the virgins bear their part singing around her feet te deum doth st ambrose sing st austin doth the like old simeon and zachary have not their songs to seek there maudlin hath left her moan and cheerfully doth sing with all blessed saints whose harmony through every street doth ring jerusalem jerusalem thy joyous fane would i see come quickly lord and end my grief and take me home to thee o oh, paint thy name on my forehead and take me hence away that i may dwell with thee in bliss and sing thy praises a jerusalem the happy home jehovah's throne on high o sacred city queen and wife of christ eternally o comely queen with glory clad with honour and degree all fair thou art exceeding bright no spot is there in thee i long to see jerusalem the comfort of us all for thou art fair and beautiful none ill can thee befall in thee jerusalem i say no darkness dare appear no night no shade no winter fowl no time doth alter there no candle needs no moon to shine no glittering star to light for christ the king of righteousness for ever shineth bright a lamb unspotted white and pure to thee doth stand in lieu of light so great the glory is thine heavenly king to view he is the king of kings beset 
in midst his servant's sight and they his happy household all do serve him day and night there there the choir of angels sing there the supernal sort of citizens which hence are rid from dangers deep do sport there be the prudent prophets all the apostles six and six the glorious martyrs in a row and confessors betwixt there doth the crew of righteous men and matrons all consist young men and maids that here on earth their pleasures did resist the sheep and lambs that hardly scaped the snare of death and hell triumph in joy eternally whereof no tongue can tell and though the glory of each one doth differ in degree yet is the joy of all alike and common as we see there love and charity do reign and christ is all in all whom they most perfectly behold in joy celestial they love they praise they praise they love they holy holy cry they neither toil nor faint nor end but laud continually o happy thousand times were i if after wretched days i might with listening ears conceive those heavenly songs of praise which to the eternal king are sung by happy whites above by saved souls and angels sweet who love the god of love o passing happy were my state might i be worthy found to wait upon my god and king his praises there to sound and to enjoy my christ above his favour and his grace according to his promise made which here i interlace o father dear quoth he let them which thou hast put of old to me be there where lo i am thy glory to behold which i with thee before the world was made in perfect wise have had from whence the fountain great of glory doth arise again if any man will serve thee let him follow me for where i am he there right sure then shall my servant be and still if any man loves me him loves my father dear whom i do love to him myself in glory will appear lord take away my misery that then i may be bold with thee in thy jerusalem thy glory to behold and so in zion see my king my love my lord my all where now as in a glass i see there face to face i shall o blessed are the pure in heart their sovereign they shall see o ye most happy heavenly whites which of god's household be o lord with speed dissolve my bands these gins and fetters strong for i have dwelt within the tents of kedar over long yet search me lord and find me out fetch me thy fold unto that all thy angels may rejoice while all thy will i do o mother dear jerusalem when shall i come to thee when shall my sorrows have an end thy joys when shall i see yet once again i pray thee lord to quit me from all strife that to thy hill i may attain and dwell there all my life with cherubim and seraphim and holy souls of men to sing thy praise o god of hosts forever and amen end of poem this recording is in the public domain paradise by frederick william faber from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part two read for librivox org by thomas peter paradise o paradise o paradise who doth not crave for rest who would not seek the happy land where they that loved are blessed 
where loyal hearts and true stand ever in the light all rapture through and through in god's most holy sight o paradise o paradise the world is growing old who would not be at rest and free where love is never cold where loyal hearts and true stand ever in the light all rapture through and through in god's most holy sight o paradise o paradise wherefore doth death delay bright death that is the welcome dawn of our eternal day where loyal hearts and true stand ever in the light all rapture through and through in god's most holy sight o paradise o paradise tis weary waiting here i long to be where jesus is to feel to see him near where loyal hearts and true stand ever in the light all rapture through and through in god's most holy sight o paradise o paradise i want to sin no more i want to be as pure on earth as on thy spotless shore where loyal hearts and true stand ever in the light all rapture through and through in god's most holy sight o paradise o paradise i greatly long to see the special place my dearest lord is destining for me where loyal hearts and true stand ever in the light our rapture through and through in god's most holy sight o paradise o paradise I feel it will not be long. Patience, I almost think I hear faint fragments of thy song. Where loyal hearts and true stand ever in the light, all rapture through and through in God's most holy sight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Inscription over the gate from the Divine Comedy, Hell, Canto Three by Dante Alighieri. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume Four, The Higher Life, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. Inscription over the gate. Through me you pass into the city of woe through me you pass into eternal pain through me among the people lost for air justice the founder of my fabric moved to rear me was the task of power divine supremest wisdom and primeval love before me things create were none save things eternal and eternal i endure all hope abandon ye who enter here end of poem this recording is in the public domain prayer from the divine comedy purgatory canto six by dante algieri translated from the italian by henry francis carey from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part two read for LibriVox.org by jason in canada as dante and craig franklin as virgil prayer from the divine comedy purgatory canto six when i was freed from all those spirits who prayed for others prayers to hasten on their state of blessedness straight i began 
O thou my luminary, it seems expressly in thy text denied that heaven's supreme decree can ever bend to supplication. Yet with this design do these entreat. Can then their hope be vain? Or is thy saying not to be revealed? He thus to me. Both what I write is plain, And these deceived not in their hope. If well, thy might consider That the sacred height of judgment Doth not stoop, because love's flame In a short moment all fulfils, Which he, who sojourns here, In right should satisfy. Besides, when I this point concluded thus, by praying no defect could be supplied, because the prayer had none access to God. Yet in this deep suspicion rest thou not contented, unless she assure thee so, who betwixt truth and mind infuses light. I know not if thou take me right, I mean Beatrice, her thou shall behold above, Upon this mountain's crown, fair seat of joy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Prayer of Penitence from the Divine Comedy, Purgatory, Canto Eleven by Dante Algieri. Translated from the Italian by Henry Francis Carey. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Canada. Prayer of Penitence, Canto 11 O thou almighty Father, who dost make the heavens thy dwelling, not in bounds confined, but that, with love intenser, there thou viewst thy primal effluence, Hallowed be thy name, join each created being to extol thy might, for worthy humblest thanks and praise is thy blessed spirit. May thy kingdom's peace come unto us, for we, unless it come with all our striving, thither tend in vain, as of their will the angels unto thee tender meet sacrifice circling thy throne with loud hosannas so of theirs be done by saintly men on earth grant us this day our daily manna without which he roams through this rough desert retrograde who most toils to advance his steps as we to each pardon the evil done to us pardon thou benign and of our merit take no count Gainst the old adversary prove thou not our virtue, easily subdued, but free from his incitements, and defeat his wiles. This last petition, dearest Lord, is made not for ourselves, since that were needless now, but for their sakes who after us remain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Man's Free Will from the Divine Comedy Purgatory, Canto 16, by Dante Alighieri. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. Man's Free Will. Ye who live, do so each cause refer to heaven above. E'en as its motion of necessity drew with it all that moves. If this were so, free choice in you were none, nor justice would there should be joy for virtue, woe for ill. Your movements have their primal bent from heaven. Not all, yet said I all, what then ensues? Light have ye still to follow evil or good, And of the will free power, Which, if it stand firm and unwearied In heaven's first essay, conquers at last. 
so it be cherished well triumphant over all to mightier force to better nature subject ye abide free not constrained by that which forms in you the reasoning mind uninfluenced of the stars if then the present race of mankind err seek in yourself the cause and find it there end of poem this recording is in the public domain fire of purification from the divine comedy purgatory canto 27 by dante algieri translated from the italian by henry francis carey from the world's best poetry volume 4 the higher life part 2 read for librivox.org by jason in canada as dante sonia as the angel craig franklin as virgil and lianyao as the voice fire of purification from the divine comedy purgatory canto twenty seven now was the sun so stationed as when first his early radiance quivers on the heights where streamed his maker's blood while libra hangs above hesperian ebro and new fires meridian flash on ganges yellow tide so day was sinking when the angel of god appeared before us joy was in his mane forth the flame he stood upon the brink and with a voice whose lively clearness far surpassed our human blessed are the pure in heart he sang then near him as we came go ye not further holy spirits he cried ere the fire pierce you enter in and list attentive to the song ye hear from thence i when i heard his saying was as one laid in the grave my hands together clasped and upward stretching on the fire i looked and busy fancy conjured up the forms erewhile beheld alive consumed in flames the escorting spirits turned with gentle looks toward me and the manchuan spake my son here torment thou mayst feel but canst not death remember thee remember thee if i safe e'en on gerion brought thee now i come more near to god wilt thou not trust me now of this be sure though in its womb that flame a thousand years containeth thee from thy head no hair should perish if thou doubt my truth approach and with thy hands thy vesture's hem stretch forth and for thyself confirm belief lay now all fear oh lay all fear aside turn hither and come onward undismayed i still though conscience urged no step advanced into the fire before me then he walked and statius who erewhile no little space had parted us he prayed to come behind i would have cast me into molten glass to cool me when i entered so intense raged the conflagrant mass the sire beloved to comfort me as he proceeded still of beatrice talked her eyes saith he e'en now i seem to view from the other side a voice that sang did guide us and the voice following with heedful ear we issued forth there where the path led upward come we heard come blessed of my father such the sounds that hailed us from within a light which shone so radiant i could not endure the view the sun it added hastes and evening comes delay not ere the western sky is hung with blackness strive ye for the pass our way upright within the rock arose and faced such part of heaven that from before my steps the beams were shrouded of the sinking sun end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Sin and Redemption From the Divine Comedy, Paradise, Canto Seven, by Dante Alighieri Translated from the Italian, by Henry Francis Carey From the World's Best Poetry, Volume Four, The Higher Life, Part Two Read for LibriVox.org, by Thomas Peter Sin and Redemption From the Divine Comedy, Paradise, Canto Seven what I have heard is plain, thou sayest. But wherefore God this way for our redemption chose eludes my search. Brother, no eye of man not perfected nor fully ripened in the flame of love may fathom this decree. It is a mark, in sooth, much aimed at, and but little kenned, and I will therefore show thee why such way was worthiest. The celestial love that spurns all envying in its bounty in itself with such effulgence blazeth as sends forth all beauteous things eternal what distills immediate thence no end of being knows bearing its seal immutably impressed whatever thence immediate falls is free free wholly uncontrollable by power of each thing new by such conformity more grateful to its author, whose bright beams, though all partake their shining, yet in those are liveliest, which resemble him the most. These tokens of preeminence on man largely bestowed, if any of them fail, he needs must forfeit his nobility, no longer stainless. Sin alone is that which doth disfranchise him, and make unlike to the chief good, for that its light in him is darkened. And to dignity thus lost is no return, unless, where guilt makes void, he for ill pleasure pay with equal pain. Your nature, which entirely in its seed transgressed, from these distinctions fell, no less than from its state in paradise, nor means found on recovery, Search all methods out as strictly as thou may, save one of these, the only fords were left through which to wade. Either that God had of his courtesy released him merely, or else man himself for his own folly by himself atoned. Fix now thine eye, intently as thou canst, on the everlasting counsel, and explore, instructed by my words, the dread abyss. Man in himself had ever lacked the means of satisfaction, for he could not stoop obeying in humility so low as high he, disobeying, thought to soar. And for this reason he had vainly tried, out of his own sufficiency, to pay the rigid satisfaction. Then behoved that God should by his own ways lead him back unto the life from whence he fell restored. By both his ways, I mean, or one alone. But since the deed is ever prized the more, the more the doer's good intent appears. Goodness celestial, whose broad signature is on the universe, of all its ways to raise ye up, was fain to leave out none. Nor aught so vast or so magnificent, either for him who gave or who received, between the last night and the primal day, was or can be. For God more bounty showed, giving himself to make man capable of his return to life, than had the terms been mere and unconditional release. And for his justice, every method else were all too scant, had not the Son of God humbled himself to put on mortal flesh. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Triumph of Christ From the Divine Comedy, Paradise, Canto Fourteen by Dante Alighieri From the World's Best Poetry, Volume Four, The Higher Life, Part Two Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Triumph of Christ From the Divine Comedy, Paradise, Canto Fourteen 
and lo forthwith there rose up round about a lustre over that already there of equal clearness like the brightening up of the horizon as at evening hour of twilight new appearances through heaven peer with faint glimmer doubtfully descried so there new substances methought began to rise in view beyond the other twain and wheeling sweep their ampler circuit wide o genuine glitter of eternal beam with what a sudden whiteness did it flow overpowering vision in me but so fair so passing lovely beatrice showed mind cannot follow it nor words express her infinite sweetness thence mine eyes regained power to look up and i beheld myself soul with my lady to more lofty bliss translated for the star with warmer smile impurpled well denoted our ascent with all the heart and with that tongue which speaks the same in all an holocaust i made to god befitting the new grace vouchsafed and from my bosom had not yet upsteamed the fuming of that incense when i knew the right accepted with such mighty sheen and mantling crimson in two listed rays the splendours shot before me that i cried god of sabaoth that doth prank them thus as leads the galaxy from pole to pole distinguished into greater lights and less its pathway which the wisest fail to spell so thickly studded in the depth of mars those rays describe the venerable sign that quadrants in the round conjoining frame here memory mocks the toil of genius christ beamed on that cross and pattern fails me now but whoso takes his cross and follows christ will pardon me for that i leave untold when in the fleckered dawning he shall spy the glitterance of christ from horn to horn and tween the summit and the base did move lights scintillating as they met and passed thus oft are seen with ever changeful glance straight or athwart now rapid and now slow the atomies of bodies long or short to move along the sunbeam whose slant line checkers the shadow interposed by art against the noontide heat and as the chime of minstrel music dulcimer and harp with many strings a pleasant dinning makes to him who heareth not distinct the note so from the lights which there appeared to me gathered along the cross a melody that indistinctly heard with ravishment possessed me yet i marked it was a hymn of lofty praises for there came to me arise and conquer as to one who hears and comprehends not me such ecstasy overcame that never till that hour was thing that held me in so sweet imprisonment end of poem this recording is in the public domain the saints in glory from the divine comedy paradise canto thirty one by dante alighieri from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part two read for librivox dot org by craig franklin the saints in glory in fashion as a snow-white rose lay then before my view the saintly multitude which is his own blood christ espoused meanwhile that other host that soar aloft to gaze and celebrate his glory whom they love hovered around and like a troop of bees amid the vernal sweets alighting now now clustering where their fragrant labour glows flew downward to the mighty flower all rose from the redundant petals streaming back unto the steadfast dwelling of their joy faces had they of flame and wings of gold the rest was whiter than the driven snow 
and as they flitted down into the flower, from range to range, fanning their plumy loins, whispered the peace and ardour which they won from that soft winnowing. Shadow none the vast interposition of such numerous flight cast from above upon the flower or view obstructed aught for through the universe wherever merited celestial light glides freely and no obstacle prevents all there who reign in safety and in bliss ages long past or new on one sole mark their love and vision fixed o trinal beam of individual star that charmest them thus vouchsafe one glance to gild our storm below if the grim brood from arctic shores that roamed where helica forever as she wheels sparkles a mother's fondness on her son stood in mute wonder mid the works of rome when to their view the Latiran arose in greatness more than earthly. I, who then, from human to divine, had passed from time unto eternity and out of Florence, to justice and to truth, how might I choose but marvel too? Twixt gladness and amaze, in sooth, no will had I to utter aught or hear and as a pilgrim when he rests within the temple of his vow looks round in breathless awe and hopes some time to tell of all its goodly state in so mine eyes coursed up and down along the living light now low and now aloft and now around visiting every step looks i beheld where charity in soft persuasion sat smiles from within and radiance from above and in each gesture grace and honour high so roved my ken and in its general form all paradise surveyed end of poem this recording is in the public domain End of the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 2